So this is going to be something a bit different. I'm going to talk about a book that I just read. Uh, this is Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. It's the third in the Wayfarer series, which is a series of books that I really love. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet is maybe one of my favourite books. The sequel, <laughs> the middle one in the series, A Close and Common Orbit, is also very good. So this is a series that I really enjoy uh, and I just want to talk about it. They don't really follow on from each other but the world that they take place in is the same and also there's some crossover so A Closed in Common Orbit kind of follows on from the events of Small Angry Planet. You don't really need to have read the first one to understand it and this one's even more separate. This is like set in like a completely different part of the galaxy and there's like only only a few things tying it to the other ones. I'll keep this as spoiler free as possible, but if you don't fancy knowing anything about it, I would recommend just like go out. Go out and read these books because they're great. I would describe the Wayfarer series as mundane sci-fi. If you're looking for like big epic adventures across space, heroes who are at like the forefront of space politics and there's wars going on and everything like you're you're in the wrong place these books are very realistic they're very human everything's understandable so the plot of the first book uh long way to a small angry planet the main characters are the crew of the wayfarer which is a ship that basically creates wormholes for fast travel across the galaxy and the idea of the book is that they need to travel across the galaxy to the small angry planet in the title and drill a hole so that people can travel there easier. That's as big as it gets, like it's just a crew of people doing their job. The third book in the series, which is which is going to be the focus of this video, is even smaller. Uh, in this universe, Earth has become uninhabitable. It's in the future, humans can't live on Earth anymore, so They've built spaceships and they've taken to the skies and they've gone in search of a new home. They've built the spaceships to sustain them indefinitely. The idea was that they would just float until they found something. If they find nothing, they'd just live on the spaceships forever. This fleet of spaceships is known as the Exodus Fleet. Humanity now lives upon these ships and they've taken on a whole new ideology. No more do people uh, squabble over resources or anything. Everyone gets what they need, nothing goes to waste. And because these are the last humans, they've put aside all squabbles from Earth and they're strictly pacifists. All humans in these books are horrified by, by violence and murder. Like, when it happens, they're like really shaken. So the Exodus fleet left Earth and they flew off into space and eventually, they found life, they found other aliens out in space and it's the galactic commons which is like an area of space and there's there's like a government and, and it's all run by different species of aliens. They've found life and, and this book is basically, it's a few generations after they found the galactic commons. What do you do now? What do the humans do now? Do they remain on the fleet? The, it's now orbiting a son that has been like gifted to them by the other alien races. Do they remain as a fleet or does everyone live planet side now? That's like the core question of this book. It's it follows like five or six different people all living on the fleet. Basically the question for all of them is what do we do now? So the characters of the book, uh, it's told from the perspective of different characters. There's Tessa who is the sister of one of the protagonists of the first book. Uh, she lives on the fleet. She's got two young kids, and when her work on the fleet is put in jeopardy from the advanced technology of the, of the alien races that they've met, what does she do now? What decision does she make to better the lives of her children, and what would be best to, to remain on the fleet, where like everyone she's ever known has been, or go off in search of something else. There's Kip, he's in his late teens, he's deciding where he fits in the world. He's sick of life on the fleet, he's, he's seen it all, 
He's been here his whole life and he's ready to leave. This is like the, the part of the story that really resonated with me because I finished university like a year or so ago and I'm in a weird place now where I'm working out what I'm doing with my life and, and even though this book takes place on a fleet of spaceships light years away it's a very human story that's being told because he's trying to find where he fits. Another of the characters is called Sawyer. Uh, he grew up on a planet shared uh, with all the alien races, so he's grew up alongside aliens, but he's looking for a sense of belonging. So he decides to move back to the fleet where he's never been before and try and find some wh somewhere that he fits in because he's never had that before. Uh, another of the characters is Isabel, and Isabel's story in the book is she's hosting an alien scholar who's come to write about life on the fleet because it's of the interest of other aliens who, who don't understand the customs of the humans, and she works as an archivist, so she's interested in the history of the fleet and the, the events that caused Earth to, to become inhospitable. And finally there is Aeus who is a caretaker which is a job that we on actual earth outside of this fictional universe uh, would understand as like an undertaker. Because they didn't know that they would ever find a new planet to live on, the humans on the fleet uh, have a new ritual upon death. So Aeus is a caretaker when someone dies, she will compost the body, basically. Because nothing can go to waste, they return the humans back to the soil where they grow all their food and, and plant their gardens. And like, it seems very alien to us, but in, in the universe of the book, it makes sense. Her story in the book is like, how she's like treated differently, because she's got this, this important job that people kind of revere. She doesn't feel like she can be herself. She's always got to like be a strong figure for everyone else. She does these services for, for when people have passed, she's got to be strong for, for everyone else and she struggles with that throughout the book. Yeah, like I said, it's like mundane sci-fi. Like these are just regular people and they're, they've got regular jobs, but it's, it's all the world building that makes this like truly science fiction and like future technology is being used to portray these very human stories. And that's something that happens throughout this series. Like in the first book, it takes place on this one ship, but the crew is a mix of humans and aliens. There's maybe uh, three or four humans on the ship, probably the same number of aliens of different species. And even though you know the characters are aliens, all the emotions and things they go through are very human experiences. And the writing is just really good at making the characters relatable and likable, like no matter how different you are from them, you can still relate to this homesick lizard alien who who misses her family. And like, that's why these are like some of my favorite books because I do like the sci-fi setting, but I love that it's a character-driven story. Usually in science fiction you can get quite bogged down in like intricate plot details, and in this all the world building is there, but the focus of it is the characters, and that's what I really like. So yeah, uh, go read these books, they're really good. I would definitely recommend Small Angry Planet to read first but you can honestly jump in anywhere. I didn't even mention Close and Common Orbit. This is a book about an AI who has recently been put into like a human body. It's illegal under Galactic Commons laws. It's all about like how she's treated by the world and like it's a lot of ethical questions like all of these books. Less so this one. This one's more about the characters, but there's there's a lot of ethical questions in the first couple of books. I, I can't recommend them enough. They're so good. It's just, it's just really lovely. It's, it's a, it's a hug. The book's a hug. It's so nice. And like, of course there's conflict in it, but the central idea 
is that you have to be good to each other because like living out in space is difficult enough you need to put your differences aside and come together i think i've been way too sincere in this video that's gonna be kind of awkward i love these books a lot and they mean a lot to me thanks for watching consider giving one of these a read if you've read them let me know what you think because i've not i've not met anyone else who's read these books bye